Hi all, let's have a, in a 10 minute nutshell game, carrying on looking at Morozovic, Lloyd's Bank Masters 1994, where he got 9.5 out of 10. Ilya Gurevich was his opponent in this game, who was 25.70. Morozovic was 2.575, so equally matched nearly on FIDE ratings. We have here the Scandinavian defense by Morozovic. And the queen goes to a5, knight f6, c6. Bishop f5, this is quite solid. Black plays e6. This is known to be quite solid actually for black. Bishop d2, knight bd7. Not worried about the discovered attack on the queen. Bishop b4 now. Bishop b3, rook a d8, a3. Black gives up the bishop voluntarily to strengthen light square control. Also, the bishop's not fantastic on c3 at the moment. h6, giving the bishop a square there on h7, potentially. b6, so maybe c5 coming up. Knight takes, knight d5. Yeah, black's position looks harmonious. There's no problem pieces here, it seems. And in fact, inviting some exchanges of rooks. Rook d6 now. That's evicted with knight f5, forking the bishop and rook there. And the rooks all come off at that point. c5 here. Is this weakening the light squares a little bit? h5. Now, does the bishop want to go back to h7? Very interesting point in the game now. Uh, if the bishop goes back to h7, let's have a quick look. I think white is slightly better. It's not the end of the world to put the bishop on h7. But actually, maybe a stronger move was played here, which looks a bit strange. You might think bishop takes h5, allowing the fork knight d4. You might think, well, that's the idea to get out, but it goes straight into a pin for c3. So what's happening here? Bishop g6, c3. Black is collecting quite a few pawns after knight takes f3 for, the, for being a bishop down. And it's actually technically equal here. Bishop d1, queen takes b2. Queen b1. Yep. It's dynamically uh, equal for a while. Yep. A bit of a probing game. Now here perhaps good is queen d1 in this position to protect a4. But actually white went a bit on the offensive letting a4 drop for b6 but this pawn is quite dangerous after. It's still about equal here after queen a1. Perhaps c4 is stronger with black might might be able to claim some sort of technical edge. But queen a1. Uh, now in this position, queen d1 might be important to gain a tempo and stop a4. But here we see bishop d1, and this allows a4. And this bishop, sorry, these bishops are not too clever now with this pawn on a3. It's difficult for white to coordinate that easily. And in fact, Black is now in the driving seat after picking up e5 here. There's ample compensation. This bishop's just stuck there with the a3 pawn. So actually it's black that seems to be much better now in this position. Bishop's coming off. But uh, that pawn is enough to secure the winning of the bishop now. Yeah, with a1, it wins the bishop. And we lead to a favourable endgame for Morozovic. Yep. He just needs to... It's a bit of a technique endgame position. Just drag his pawns along. Yep. And then we go into another endgame here after pawn's queen. Dragging this pawn along. It's quite a long game. And yes, this pawn's slowly being dragged along into a technique position now, really. And quite a mammoth game, actually. 113 
moves. So there was a few moments of excitement when Bishop h5 was played, allowing the fork and laying the pin. And with very careful, accurate play, White could have held the balance, but the A pawn became a major thing, just killing one of the bishops. And then other pawns started to drop. So Morozovic got into the driving seat and won this game. A uh, bit of a grueling, a grueling game, yeah. It's one of the most grueling of his 9.5 out of 10 score in Lloyd's Bank Masters of 1994. But I thought I should show it for completeness. Uh, okay, comments, questions, links, appreciated. Thanks very much.